Hello, you're watching Villel Miniatures. I am Rebecca and today I'm going to build my walking wizard's castle for the Smash Bash Miniatures competition. This is a kit bashing competition that I will link to below. Uh, I will mainly base my build on this miniature here, which is the giant uh, forest dweller by Villel Miniatures. Uh, and it's available in the Etsy shop. I'll link to that below as well. A while back I went into a hobby store and I found this uh, railway model house, uh, which I'll also be using in my build. Mm, other parts that I'll be using are some building parts from the Titanicus uh, box and also some uh, small parts from the Gardens of Moor. And uh, lastly, I'll be using probably just the head of this creature, which is also made by Villain Miniatures and available on the Etsy store. Here is the forest dweller that I'll be basing my build on. I also pre-built the little train house that I'm going to use. And my plan was to put the house on top of the forest dweller, something like this. But uh, I thought that for this to work, I need a flat surface. Now that I have a flat surface, I can try to glue the house onto the forest dweller. So I'll use some really thick super glue for this. This is actually a perfect fit. <laughs> it's not possible to see on camera, but the cut that I made into the forest dweller to make the straight top uh, is not completely straight. So when I put that, the forest dweller the right way up, uh, the house is a bit wobbly. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'll take a base and I'll put the forest dweller on the base and lift him up a bit. Uh, maybe with some aluminum foil, uh, just to straighten everything out. From the Games Workshop Titanicus range, I'm going to use some little building sections. I have uh, pre-built a couple of floors um, and I will see how I'll put them on. Let's see. I think I just want them sticking right up uh, from the roof. So I've got one here with a door, so that's probably going to be the first floor. Um, and I think I'll have it full height, so all three uh, boxes. Yeah, that looks good. And to top off this uh, tower, uh, I'll use uh, some of the Gardens More parts. I have tested this before and this little part fits very nicely on top of this tower. I really want this tower to sit straight on top of the roof here, uh, but then I need to fill out this gap. So I'll do this with some aluminum foil and then when, I've fin when I'm finished building, uh, I'll come back and uh, texture these uh, to hide any alu aluminum foil and other materials that are just used to uh, fill in gaps. I want to add some more details to this building uh, and I found out that these wall parts from again the Titanicus kit uh, actually has the exact same height as uh, the first floor of this building. So what I'll do is I'll make a corner out of these two uh, and I'll put them onto this corner right here. This part will cover part of the window, uh, but I don't think it matters because it's probably put on after the building was finished anyway. 
Okay, and then I found uh, some other parts, or one other part that I really liked uh, from the Gardens of Moor kit, which is this little gargoyle. So I'll find a place to stick that as well. I also wanted this forest dweller or troll uh, to have a face, and um, I really like the face of this miniature um, and therefore I am going to use that face. But I just sort of uh, cut it off from the top uh, and I'm going to angle it down some way uh, to have it right here on the chest because that looks really weird and I like it. I'll fill all of the gaps and all of that later. Right now I just want to put everything in place. Then I think I'll just go ahead and try to fill in some of the gaps around the head. I'll use some green stuff for this. I'll just stick some pieces of green stuff uh, around the neck and then I'll smooth them out and try to follow the shape of the folds in the skin a little bit. But I'm not going to be too careful with it because uh, most of this is probably going to get lost in a lot of dirt and vines and things that I'm going to add soon. Now the green stuff is almost smooth. Uh, it was a bit tricky uh, to get out all of the lumps because of the size of this thing. It's a bit difficult to hold. <laughs> but I think this is starting to look okay. This little piece is supposed to be uh, at the top of the tower or at the top of the spire here. Uh, I think that the skull is quite cheesy so I'm going to just take it off uh, but leave the spike so that I can have that uh, on top of the tower. When I was looking for parts for this project I came across these old screws uh, and I kind of wanted to integrate them into the project, but I couldn't find anywhere to fit them on the actual um, wizard's tower. So that's when I decided that I wanted to give this wizard some creatures. Uh, and I am going to base these creatures on some other Wilhelm miniatures miniatures, which are these uh, small forest dwellers. So, the plan is uh, basically to attach these screws instead of heads for these guys. So, first of all, I need to detach their, the heads that they already have. <gasps> oh well, I don't think anything's broken. Uh, the head is off. I'll attach these uh, with some green stuff. And I actually just went uh, in the freezer and got a new batch of green stuff. Yes, our green stuff lives in the freezer uh, because when it's frozen, uh, the two parts don't mix. So it keeps on being fresh for longer. So if you want to keep your green stuff fresh, keep it in the freezer. Now that the head is off, I'm going to try to attach the screws. So what I'll do first is I'll try to attach them to each other, and just to, to make them into a little bunch, and then try to attach them onto the uh, shoulders of the little forest dweller. Now they're stuck together and I can try to attach them to the figure. Trying to make sure that they're approximately on top of the head <laughs> and straight up. So 
something like this. I'm going to try to build up some sort of a neck around these screws with some green stuff and try to kind of integrate it into the body. Uh, but I don't think I'll work too much on it because I'm gonna cover a lot of this up with uh, some texture. I built the other one in the same way and here they are. They look like really funny screw volcanoes <laughs> and I really like them. <laughs> I'm going to do a lot of uh, texture and things on these as well so they won't look uh, quite as funny I hope. <laughs> Now we've come to the really exciting part of this project. I'm going to texture these guys. Uh, I will start off doing this with some toilet paper, uh, wood glue and some water. So I'll just take some toilet paper and uh, rip it up into small parts uh, and put it in this cup and then mix it with some wood glue and water and make a paste. Ooh. Yeah, that looks about right. I'm just trying to fill in some of the gaps underneath the house because this now looks very much like a platform and I want it to uh, merge a bit more with the troll. I'm mixing up another batch of this uh, uh, paste and then I realized that it's almost impossible to see on camera what I'm actually doing. So um, for the next batch I'm going to add a little bit of uh, black paint to make the mixture maybe grey so that it might show up a bit better on camera. But I'm starting to become quite happy with uh, the way this part turned out. Uh, it looks a bit more integrated uh, and yeah, kind of looks like this troll has just come up out of the ground. As I was doing the texture, I realized that it would be quite strange to have uh, a lot of this stuff uh, up here because it would look really messy compared to the rather clean tower and house so uh, I needed to find something else to cover up this uh, bit of aluminum foil. So uh, what I did was I went back to the Mechanicus box and I found some pieces. So I'm going to attach this one right here. I thought it looked a little bit like a sort of veranda um, and yeah, so this is gonna be here. And then I also took one of the more plain plates uh, and cut it in half. And I'm gonna use these uh, as plates on the side. This is incredibly messy. But I will uh, do some more texture to try to hide this amazing gluing job that I'm doing now. Okay, now it looks a bit more uh, a bit better <laughs> and I don't have to have this uh, earthy mess all over the roof of my house. I've started texturing the base uh, and I was looking around for some fun details to have on the base when I came across uh, these little casts of pig teeth that I had lying around for another project. Uh, so I'm going to attach a few of these onto the base and see how that looks. Just stick them in here and 
and I'll glue them better in place when this mess is dry. It's not going to be visible that they are actually teeth, uh, but I think they'll give a nice variation to the texture of the base. I've let the toilet paper and wood glue uh, mixture dry for a couple of days. Uh, it's not completely dry yet, it's still, uh, you can still feel it give a little bit, uh, but the outside is dry so I can continue working on it. Uh, now for the next step in uh, the texturing uh, work, <laughs> uh, I will use some more wood glue uh, and also some dirt from the garden. Uh, this is quite nice because it has a lot of uh, texture of its own uh, and a lot of different grain sizes and also some roots and small rocks and stuff inside. So that's going to be great. So I'll try to make a uh, mixture of dirt and wood glue. I'll apply this uh, mixture in uh, some of the cracks that didn't really get covered by the toilet paper uh, and also to give it a bit more grainy texture all over. Now I'm finished with the texturing uh, with the uh, uh, dirt and uh, glue. So it's looking like this, quite dirty, <laughs> and it's time to prime the model and paint it. I've also done a little bit of texture on uh, my little creatures, which I'll also uh, prime and paint now. I have based my miniatures in with uh, Mornfang Brown spray, and now it's time to paint them. Uh, I'll start off uh, using some dark green. Uh, and just stipple or dry brush it uh, a little bit all over these guys, really, uh, just to get some variation in the um, brown color that I'm going to use for a base. The next step is to add some color to the skin. I'm going to start out with using um, this sort of pink color um, and I'm trying to uh, concentrate it on the raised areas. I changed my mind about this uh, pink color as it, as it clashes quite uh, awfully with the green so I'll try to do a uh, more yellow color instead. I'll just apply this straight over the pink and then just skip the uh, pink for the other ones. <laughs> yeah, this was a bit, bit better match for the green and brown colors. I'm really glad I got to do two of these little ones before starting on the skin color for the bigger one uh, because I realized that the one with the pink, uh, this, actually looks slightly better than the one without the pink even though the pink itself clashed with the, the other colors. Uh, so I think I'm gonna add some pink again uh, for the big troll and see how that goes. I'm going to use a very light dry brush to uh, catch some of the details in both the troll uh, and the brickwork and also the roof. Uh, but before that, I'll cover the roof in a uh, different tone so that I actually get different colors for all of these areas. I'm 
Now I'll dry brush all of these uh, um, areas with a very light color. I'll use the same color for both the um, troll and the brickwork and also the roof. And try to be very light on this one and just pick out some of the uh, raised areas. I want some of the details, like the tower and the stairs, to be metal, uh, but I want them to be old and rusted metal. That's why I'm applying uh, the metal color with a sponge. I'm painting the screws uh, with a sponge as well, uh, to give them back their uh, metal color. Feels a bit strange to paint screws metal, as that's not usually necessary. To give the bricks um, a bit of a more of a brick color, uh, I'll try to wash them with some orange and red and see if I can uh, change the, their color a bit. This brick color turned out really great. It looks a lot more like uh, bricks than I actually had expected. So before I start washing um, the rest of the miniature, <laughs> um, I'm just going to stipple on some lighter green color and even uh, maybe even a uh, light beige uh, to make these green areas pop a little more. Uh, otherwise they might disappear completely when I start washing. And I can use this green color as well to uh, sort of fake a little bit of moss uh, and things where I don't have any texture, uh, just by stippling on a little bit of this green. Now that the green is in place, I need to figure out something to do about these windows. Um, I think I'm gonna try to paint the uh, glass black, uh, but then all of these edges here can't be black as well because then everything will disappear. So uh, I think I changed my mind again and I wanna keep them metal, uh, but I'll just go over them one more time uh, with the silvery color uh, just to remove some of the orange wash that I managed to spill on them. Now it's time for some washes, uh, and I think I'm going to uh, wash the whole body of the troll, uh, the metal, and uh, the yeah the tower in one go, uh, mostly using uh, sepia and red, uh, and try to mix them a little bit as I go along. This red is really really strong, so I'm going to be a bit careful with it. <laughs> I'm going to try to do some rust effects. Um, I haven't really done this before, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, so I'm just mixing some bright orange, which I think is a bit too bright, uh, with some brown, and then watering it down quite a lot uh, to get uh, sort of a wash. And then I'll see how this looks. And just kind of stick it into some of the recesses where rust might collect. Now that the wash is almost dried, I'm going to do some highlights um, for the grass and the giant uh, using some of this light green uh, and also maybe some of this uh, pale almost white color just to make it pop a little bit after applying so much wash. <laughs> I'm also going back in with um, a sponge, uh, but this time using a brighter um, metal or silver color, uh, just to try to get some of the silvery shine back to this just using a very small amount on some of the metal areas. 
Now this project is almost finished. I just have a couple of small details left that I really want to do. Um, one of them being to paint the little face of the troll, which is hiding under here, um, a bit more clearly. Uh, probably like a face. <laughs> uh, I'm currently missing all of my, or at least one of my regular face paints. So we'll see if I can manage something face-like without it. And it's tiny and placed in a very weird spot underneath here, so... Might not be the best face, but I'll try. <laughs> the other little detail I want to do is uh, to do the toenails again. There we go, now this project is finished. Uh, all I need to do now is uh, paint the base rooms black, uh, take some photos and send them in to the Smash Bash competition. And we'll see how that goes. Uh, if you want to see more of my miniature projects, uh, then you can follow me on Instagram. Uh, I'll link to that below. Uh, on Instagram, I post things extremely irregularly, uh, but you might see something there. <laughs> Um, otherwise, uh, like and subscribe for this channel and this video, uh, and I might come back and do some other projects some other time. <laughs>